Hello and welcome to a short video showing you the power of the Galileo Display Processor's built-in web control panel. So being a web control panel, you need to open your web browser, type in the IP address of the Galileo, and follow it by a forward slash Galileo. You're presented with the default home page for your Galileo Display Processor. And you can see on the left you have four different sections to choose from. So to manage the real-time video wall, surface on the Galileo wall processor, you can click the design button and then choose a surface to control. Now the, through the web client you can only control one surface. So these surfaces are configured on the Galileo in our demo room here in Alameda. I want to control the 3x4 video wall, the main wall of that demo room. And you can see I have six windows open, two large windows on my 3x4 array and the interface clearly shows this. Now if you have a tablet or a large phone, you have the exact same functionality I'm showing you here. Open a web browser and press the designer button and now you're presented with the same screen. So on a tablet or phone, I could pinch and zoom. With my uh, keyboard and mouse, I'm not able to do that, but you understand the differences, I'm sure. So right away I can choose a window and drag and drop it anywhere I'd like. I can move windows around. It does click or snap to the grid lines as I have them makes it very easy to adjust a window to a certain screen in this place to resize a window. So very simply, very quickly, I can move all of my windows around and this is happening in real time on the Galileo in my demo room. If I'd like to add some more sources for the bottom here, I can come up to the upper left, click the plus button, and it brings a menu up to say what kind of window would you like to add? An input or perhaps a layout in a certain window or an application, remote client or a browser window. Let's open a browser for let's say the YouTube and then I can tell it where on this array to place my window. So I click my mouse here and it automatically creates a window within the boundary of that screen for my YouTube video. Let's add another one. Let's go to my inputs, input number 12 and I'll add that one here and one more to round it out. Let's say a remote client. Workstation 4 I want to add right here. Now you can see my input 12 is inactive. There's actually no input right now into that input and it tells me right there in the screen. But from here I can then also delete a window and add another one with a source that's actually active on my system. Let's take the dream jump and open it right here. So you can see very quickly from the web interface I can move windows around, resize them, add new windows or close windows all from the free web control panel interface. And this is the designer tab of the web control interface. Let's go back to the portal. Now let's click into the control panel. And if I hit control, I see a number of different types of control panels. These can be configured for different users or different demonstrations. If I click the Alameda demo room, I can see that we have a control panel for all of the specific things I want to let my people do in our demo room. So we can have a background image that tells us it's the RGB demo room and we have certain buttons you can see as I mouse over them that light up to allow you to in this case recall different layouts. So these give you an easy way to click a button and now that layout is recalled to the RGB demo room Galileo on the 3x4 wall. Remember this is talking to only one of the surfaces at a time. If I want to design my own control panel, that's very simple as well. Let's go back, a couple of clicks back to my control panel editor, and now I can edit one of the control panels, or I could create a new one. I started one here earlier as a test with a few simple buttons. So for the control panel editor, you see a grid in the background here that allows you to align certain things. If I go to my actions, I can actually set a background color or upload an image. I'll just change the color of the background. So I can set that background color to be whatever I'd like. I have some buttons already on here. Let's get rid of some of these buttons. I'll show you how easy it is. Basically we're going to set up buttons that allow us to do a certain action, whether that's recall a layout or execute a script or something like that. What we're going to do first is come over here on the left and in the toolbox I want to add a button. So it asks me for a label. I'm going to be really creative and call this button 1. 
a color for the button and you can use any color you want. If you have a color scheme you want to use, you can certainly add certain colors based on a company's color scheme. And then what would you like the action to be when someone clicks this button? Let's say I want to open a layout. Okay, you can see all the other choices here. I could run a script. I could set a certain parameter for a certain function. I can launch a command or I can go to a certain control panel. In this case, let's open a layout. And then below us gives us all of the layouts that are currently configured on the Galileo. And now they're available to me to add to a button. So now I can move my button wherever I'd like. I can resize it. And now this button would allow me to recall a certain layout. Let's add another button. How about a different color? Now this one, I'm going to open a different layout. And what I would suggest is to title the button the same thing as your layout. So you know what that button actually does. So the first button, I don't even know what that actually does. Is it a script? Is it a layout? Which layout is it? Second button, I know it's preset one. That's pretty simple. And you can keep adding more buttons and more buttons. If you want to go back and change something, you can click on a button and edit that. And you can call this layout one, because now I know that's actually what that is. So these buttons can be placed anywhere on this canvas, on the background. And as I mentioned, you can have a background photograph, much like you saw a moment ago with our NASA shot and the text RGB demo. That all has to be done in an external editor like Photoshop, and then you bring it in as a background image. Set the background. There are some different themes for the control panel layouts. That is down here, the theme of modern. You have a flat theme. You can see just a little flatter overall. And we have a glossy theme that gives you a little glossy look to the buttons. You have different aspect ratios as well for this control panel. You may be designing a control panel specifically for a mobile phone or tablet. So we give you those choices right here in landscape or portrait. And as I set the aspect ratio, notice how that changes now. And I can then do my layout based on that particular device's orientation and aspect ratio. Or you can set your own aspect ratio based on resolution, 1920 by 1080. And now I'm back to my 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So lots of power here to create your own control panels. When I'm finished with this one, I can save it. I've already named it because I was editing an existing one. If I want to change the name, I can come to the upper left and change my name and say John's control panel. And I can rename that. Now to deploy this, it's saved. We can go back to the original portal and now go to the control panel button on the left and click control. I can choose John's control panel. And now there's my control panel with two buttons for recalling layouts. And you can see as I mouse over, they get the little glossy look to the buttons. That was part of my theme. So pretty quickly, you can see how you can come to the web control panel built into every Galileo, go to the designer page right away and adjust real time what's happening on your surface, in this case, three by four wall, and adjust and move. You can see the layout has actually changed. As I move things around, I can resize them. You have all sorts of other options here. This isn't to be inclusive of every option in this webinar. The documentation goes through and explains each of these possibilities here. And go back to the portal. So this gives you some ideas of the power of the Galileo's built-in web client. For more complete information, check out the user and technical reference guides for Galileo. Thanks so much for watching.